Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter, the master of hoppets today coming back at you with some historic beer from one of my all time favorite breweries, Bawai Hela, aka the people behind Schlenkala, a brewery that I've always loved ever since I discovered it really, ever since I, this channel was really young and I've been a big fan of Rauchbier mainly because of them, they were the first foray into Rauchbier for me and it's still like the best, I love drinking their beers. Uh, but they brought out this beer last year, which is their Stiftsgarten beer. So actually, in the last few years, Linkala has been doing, or Brauerei Hella has been doing quite a few new kind of beers. They've done some alcohol-free stuff, which was based on historic recipes. Heinzlein, I've reviewed them. I was not a big fan, but there are other usual beers I'm a big fan of. They hit those. They do. They've done numerous different unfiltered versions of some of their very iconic off beers, uh, but like. And they, was it a few years ago, I think? They also started putting some of their uh, only keg releases in bottles and whatnot. But most of the time, it's a brewery that does not do a lot of new stuff. So when they ever, whenever they do something new, it's like, I, I want to try it. And this is one of the newest. So this is Stiftsgartens beer. And this is a historic beer. It's a 5.7% Stiftsgartens beer. I actually do not know if it's a lager or if it's an ale, which is really interesting because there's not really any mention of the, this online. But um, it's a collaboration they've made with Michalsberg, or not really a collaboration, but it's a series of it's part of a series of historic products from uh, uh, from Bamberg uh, uh, called Stiftgarten something. There's also Stiftgarten wine, wine, um, and Michalsberg is the abbey, big abbey in Bamberg, and that was originally a brewery at one point in history. Uh, I think it was the sixth. It says here on the back, from the 12th to the 20th uh, century. Uh, it was a brewery and uh, the oldest brewery in Bamberg and the Stiftsgarten is the gardens around the monastery and that's what this is named after which is where they probably would have grown local hops or whatever grew, you know things to use and bring and uh, what's really cool is that one of the brewers of the original abbey was one of the people who ended up becoming brewmaster at Brauerei Hella which is a brewery that makes Schlenkerla Konrad Graza. So Konrad Graza uh, is one of the uh, brewers from Stinkala and his family line is the family line that currently owns the Brauerei Hella and the Stinkala brewery, which is, you know, massively cool that uh, they found something that is, you know, related to him uh, in, in making this beer. So this is actually a recipe that comes from their old recipe books based on beer brewed uh, back in the day in the, in the area. So they tried to make something where they incorporated local ingredients as well, because they you would have used local ingredients in this. So they've used uh, hops from the Bamberg Hop Gardens. There is a hop garden in, in, in Bamberg. And then also hops from Spalt. Uh, they don't say specifically which hops they put in there, but since it's from Spalt, it's probably Spalter hops or maybe Spalt Select or something like that. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a little cool beer to you know com commemorate some Bamberg history. And one of the big differences with this is that this is an amber beer with a lot of hops without smoked malt. And I can smell smoke already. And I think that is the case of the Schlenkala effect really with the Helles Lager as well, because they reuse yeast, it's the same equipment and all, 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 everything. You get smoke flavor anyway, but lighter. So like, it's like, it's such old, you know, uh, an old brewery that a lot of stuff just sticks around and they have their own house yeast for so many generations and it's, it's almost like I, I guess technically being in ferment or like sticking to uh you know brewing wort that's smoky for so many generations it's somehow morphed on to almost be a smoky yeast i'd imagine <laughs> uh because one of the crazy things with smoke it's like it's one of the flavor profiles or flavors uh in anything that will stick around i mean if you think about peated whiskey you distill that stuff and it's still smoky. So it, it is it is crazy. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, 5.7%. Uh, I've, I've had it for a little while, but I'm sure it's still gonna be nice and tasty. And when I poured this out, it just had the most humongous fluffy white head. It looked gorgeous. This is also unfiltered, like a lot of their newer releases. And uh, yeah, it looks beautiful in the glass. It's like a slightly hazy uh, copper color. It looks a bit more rust orange on camera, but it looks very nice in the glass. It looks a, bit, a little bit like a Vienna lager or something like that, or maybe even a, uh, a not a Kölsch from, not from Cologne, from Dusseldorf, an Altbier, almost something like that. But it looks nice, let's check out the aroma.
Yeah, it's interesting. The, the smoke is for sure there. Uh, it's not as full on and like crazy. It's kind of like the same nuance you get in, uh, yeah, in the Hillis. It's like super delicate, soft, smoky malt. But lots of toffee, lots of caramel, lots of bready, chewy, kind of Munich malt-esque character. A little bit lighter, maybe like a little bit of a honey malty thing. And then there's for sure also a kick of hops, like a nettley and slightly citric, also quite peppery hop aroma. It smells real old school, but it smells really damn good. Really like fresh and vibrant still, even though this has been in the bottle. I think they released it in April or so last year. So it's been in the bottle for a while, but I'm not, and I'm not sure if it's a one-time brew or they still do this occasionally, but yeah, it smells nice. Let's try it, cheers. Mm. Really refreshing, really nice. It's almost like if you took, there is, the smoke is so soft. I think it's more on the aroma, but it's almost if you took one of the, like a classic Schlinkala beer and just took away the biggest portion of the smoke. It actually also has a fairly high bitterness compared to uh, other Schlinkala beers. Like it feels like around 30 IBUs or so. Like it has a, a bit of a bite to it without it being too much. Oddly refreshing too, because of the hops, like nestle citric. There's almost like a little bit of a marmalade thing for me too, but that could be a combination of like uh, the hops and the malts and whatnot. Very crackery, toasted crackers, uh, biscuity. Like, yeah, it has like a rustic toasty breadiness, like freshly toasted, uh, bread. Like we sometimes talk, talk about like hazelnut loaves or anything. Like any, if you go to a beer garden in, in Bamberg and you have like a, a spread of, of, of uh, charcuterie or whatever, you don't call it that in, in Germany, but you have like your bread and whatnot. Like there's, you always get an assortment of breads and it's almost one of those like medium dark color kind of breads you get in here. Like it's like that, like soft toasty kind of breadiness. It's not like roasty or burnt or anything, but it's just like a lightly toasted bread, which is really nice. I mean, you can just tell also like these guys have brewed these kinds of beers for so long. These, well, it, it tastes like a lager pretty much. I'm not sure if it's made with lager yeast. Again, like it's really clean tasting and it just reminds me of like a Vienna lager or something similar to that. But it's just really fucking good. It, it's. It's great. It's it's quite different from other Sincala products in the fact that the, especially the uh, uh, flavor profile is like next to no smoke. I mean, it's just super subtle, but I, that must 100% be the, the yeast that's being reused from, uh, uh, from the, you know, their normal beers and whatnot. Actually also, the more it sits in the glass, the less I notice it. But yeah, pretty crazy to think this is a beer that's probably been brewed in, yeah, you know, the late 20th century or something. I, they don't say when the recipe was from, just that it's a traditional recipe that they had in their brew books that they uh, brewed. So I'm not sure how old the recipe is, but, you know, and if it called for Spalt hops, I think Spalt is some of the oldest hops around in Germany as well, Spalt hops. But um, yeah, this is wonderful. Like if you like bready, hoppy, kind of amber lager, Vienna lager, these kind of more, or even just like the lighter colored Matsons. You think you'd really dig this. I think you could all even like, yeah, like one of the lighter or lighter, you can also get Matsons that are like pale nowadays. Uh, but like, if you think of a classic Matson that you'd have for Oktoberfest or something like that, that is not like the modern golden yellow stuff. I'd think of something like this as well in terms of color. And also flavor because it has a bit of that toasty bread and it's also a bit of a nuttiness and whatnot. But surprising substantial hop, bitterness and flavor, which is nice. This is really fun good. This is awesome classic beer. I could drink this all day. Would I drink it again? Yes. Um, and it, it's actually, if you were, if they serve this actually gala, I'm not sure if they do this now because I haven't been in, in Bamberg for like two years or so. But if you serve this at the brewery, this would actually be a really nice cha a change of pace between all the hop beers, having this and the Hilles, I think that would be nice actually, just because a lot of people, I think uh, they think the Hauk beer stuff is a bit too much. I don't, but you know, it just would be nice.
Um, but yeah, really good. I'm not blown away, but this is just really, really high quality, quality craftsmanship. This is as much craft as your super fruited whatever or your hazy double IPAs and whatnot. The flavor profile is just not modern, but I think it tastes really fucking great. So, mm. more OG beer for the win. Really lovely stuff. If you love amber lager type beers, you'll really dig this with the softest kiss of schmunkiness. So if you guys had a chance to try the Stiftgarten beer from Paul Heller, aka Schlenkala, let me know what you thought of it. And uh, we've got some more coming up from these guys as well. I've actually got their, <laughs> I thought that would be fun to try their beer brand. Their, uh, yeah, their beer brand is uh, a schnapps. Schnapps, a schnapps. Um, so yeah, hard alcohol. I got two different ones, one H and Rauch malt, smoke malt, and one, this is just a distilled beer, I guess. And then we got some alcohol-free beer from the alcohol-free Rauch beer. I've not tried that. And some more unfiltered vintage bottles that will be fun to try. We're going to do a set of vintage box at one point, which will be really fun. So yeah, if you guys had this one already, let me know what you thought of it. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm gonna say cheers and some delicious, very, very historic beer. Mm. Let's say cheers and see you guys in the beer review. Maybe even it has a little bit of a buttered bread kind of note, almost like English beer, English ales. It's really good though. Mm.